Hello, my name is Leah. I'd like to welcome you to this video where what we're going to do is go ahead and take a look at how we can convert an image into a mask. And the uses for this is that it's going to allow us to do some pretty cool things like making it appear as if snow or water or something along those lines is appearing through the cracks of the texture. So this is a very simple and easy thing to do. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click inside my content browser here. I'm going to go ahead and choose import. And what I want to do is import these two textures. So once that's imported, you can see that I have this very basic textures. I have this very basic normal map and a very basic diffuse map. Now you can go ahead and you can make your textures much better than these ones. I simply just taken these from the internet and then converted the original image uh, to a normal map using the NVIDIA tools um, on the NVIDIA normal map tools. So the outcome of this is not going to be the best it can be. But for the purpose of this tutorial, it's going to be just fine. So I'm going to right click and go ahead and create new material. So let's go ahead and choose a material. I'm going to say M underscore ground uh, underscore. Let's see water as i guess we're going to make some sort of water appear from here so let's go ahead and open this up and all we need to do is actually i'm not really too interested in using the uh the ground there just just the use of the material go ahead and bring in our two textures and let's just hook these up this is a very simple to do so let's go ahead and put this into the base and let's go ahead and put this into the normals and you can see that we have this very simple very basic material here so what we want to do is if we have a look at the texture, you can see that we have these cracks here and the intention of this of this um, this mask is that we're going to take those cracks and make it appear as if water is going to seep up through them before uh, layering itself along the top here. So in order to do that, let's just go ahead and make some space because uh, we're going to have a mask in this area here and I'm going to press control C and control V and let's go ahead and get started so what we're going to do is we're going to take this texture map and we want to go ahead and multiply this so let's go ahead and bring it in multiply node in by holding the m key and left clicking let's go ahead and we're going to multiply this instead of multiplying this by the rgb value we just want to choose one of these other random values in this case i'm going to go ahead and choose a g for the green channel and then we want to go ahead and multiply this by a vertex color so let's let's go ahead and Bring in a vertex color and let's go ahead and multiply that by the same value it doesn't really matter you can go ahead and choose any of these values any other value if you want just do not choose this rgb value again uh, as the same as this one so once we've done that we need to go ahead and bring in another multiply let's go ahead and multiply this and here we want to go ahead right click and add a divide okay and uh in the divide, we want to go ahead and press and hold the one key and left click to bring in a constant one vector. I'm going to go ahead and set this default value to around 10. And then let's put this into the A and let's just go ahead and make some more space over here. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to press and hold the one key and left click. However, this time I'm going to right click and I'm going to go ahead and choose convert to parameter. And we're going to go ahead and give this a name. I'm going to call this water amount. However, if you're using snow or something along those lines, you can also call it snow or you can call it snow and water and just make the textures interchangeable. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Now, once we've done that, what we need to do is we need to bring in a one minus because if we take the texture as it is now, the mask is actually in the inverted state. So I can show you what I mean. If I right click and go preview mesh, you can see that we have this very bright mesh, which actually is overpowered. Um, uh or making it super emissive which we don't really want so let's go ahead and um stop previewing that and let's go ahead and bring in this one minus so let's drag off this and type in one minus and if we go ahead and preview this one start previewing you can see that uh now it's gone completely black now actually if we go ahead and look at the amount here the reason that we had that complete whiteness and the complete black is that we didn't actually set a default value here so go ahead and set that to one now if we go ahead and if we preview from here you see that um the mask is inverted 
and if we go ahead and preview from here you see that we actually have the right mask here so now you can see what's going to actually happen here is where this white area is is where whatever it is that we want to rise up um uh to be so if i go ahead and set this down to zero as you've seen before set zero we have nothing which is just going to render us the default texture here how do we set this to one you see that we're starting to get what that goes up through those cracks and if we go ahead and set this to something like 20 you see that it's going to be completely covered so i guess you don't really want to go that high but you know you can do if that's something you want so once we've done that you see that we now have the mask created the last thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and clamp these values uh, the reason being is that if we have a value that is higher or lower than one we may get some uh, weird artifacts within the actual mask so let's just go ahead and drag off here and type in clamp and bring in a clamp so that's it that we have our mask done and we're ready to go so i'm going to go ahead and bring this over here i'm going to press the c key to comment this and i'm just going to go ahead and call this mask now if we want to we can go ahead and have a nice color here so let's uh select this and uh, differentiate this color here so i'm going to go with something like this uh purple i think so once we've done that you see that what we now can do is disconnect our textures over here and we can start to use this so all i'm going to do is show you the very basics of how this works um later on you could go ahead and make this more complicated if you want uh, but for now i'm just going to linear interpolate between the two values and show you exactly how this works so if we go ahead and press and go ahead and press and hold the l key and left click we're going to bring in a linear interpolate and i'm going to go ahead and plug this into um the igb value and for the second one i'm just going to go ahead and press the three key and left click and uh, I'm going to convert this actually to a parameter and call this watercolor. And water typically for the albedo is, is going to be black, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a slight color. Um, this will make it a little easier to see uh, what's actually going on. So it's still going to be pretty dark, pretty dark color here. But let's go ahead and plug this into B. And if we go ahead and plug this now into the alpha okay and then we go ahead and plug this in all the way well it's all the way over there but let's just uh i'll right click here and choose base color you can actually see that we're getting this water to appear through the cracks here so this is pretty cool so just to demonstrate how this is working uh or just to reinforce how it's working if i go ahead and set this to a low value like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 you can see that the 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 lower this value the lower that water is and if i go ahead and set this to uh one you can see that we get more of that water and so on and so forth so if we go ahead and set this to zero as i mentioned before we're going to get nothing but the default texture and if we set this to something high we're just going to get the color on top here so let's go ahead and set this back down to one and what i'm going to do is we're just going to simply set up the um the normals here and some roughness values and that'll be it so again we're going to go ahead and press l to bring in a linear interpolate and we're gonna choose number one. Now, if you have a second texture, like a, a, a snow, you can go ahead and bring that normal map in for the snow, but as we're just gonna be using water and the water I'm gonna be using is gonna have no normals, I'm just gonna go ahead and press the three key and left click, and this will bring in a constant three vector. Uh, again, I'm gonna right click, convert this to a normal, uh, to a, a parameter, and I'm just gonna call this water normals now really we don't really need to do that for this particular um normal but let's just parameterize it anyway so i'm going to go ahead and set this to 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then one so let's see let's do that again 0 0.5 0 0.5 and one so this is going to give us a flat a flat normal color go ahead and plug this in over here go ahead and plug this up into our mask and again we can go ahead and put this into our normals so this should help with the illusion a little better again the better the normal map um the better this effect will be but you can see that we're actually getting water that's appearing through these cracks now i'm just going to go ahead and set up a simple roughness value and a simple specular so um let's see what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and press one and one to bring in two constant vectors and Let's just move these over here. And the top one is going to be the ground. So convert to parameter and call this
ground roughness and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. However, I'm going to call this water. Now, what I like to do when dealing with this type of, um, or, or creating this type of effect is I like to disconnect the base color here and just work with these roughness values. It just makes it a little easier to visualize. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that linear interpolate again. I'm going to choose A and B, and I'm going to put this alpha in over here. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and plug this into the roughness. You can see that now we have this very shiny, very reflective um, effect. Now we want to take the ground and we actually want to change this to maybe 0.8 uh, something along those lines. And you see what that actually does is it gives us a little bit of roughness onto the ground, but most of it is where the water is here. And so we can take these and we press control C and control V and I'm going to bring these up here and I'm going to change the name here. So I'm going to call this spec and I'm going to take this second one, call it spec. And I'm going to take the water. Let's see. I'm going to give this a default value of maybe around 10. And uh, let's see what this does. Let's plug in this specular and let's just disconnect this for a moment and see what this does. So let's go ahead and select this and give this like 0.2 maybe 0.8 we can wait yeah we're gonna i'm gonna change this down to 0.2 and uh, this this one yeah it's fine so let's plug these both back in let's plug this in to the over here and then that's it so we can go ahead and move these out and so that's the very basics of this material. Now, if we go ahead and compile this and uh, we go ahead and create a material instance. So I'll select this, right click, create material instance. And I'm just gonna, after the M, add an I for material instance. And then we can control those parameters, those very basic parameters over here. So here we have our water, our, 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 our material, sorry. And because we parameterize this, we can go ahead and change the amount so we can increase this if we like. And you can see how that's slowly affecting the uh, material here. There we go. You can see that we have those nice shiny sparkles right here in the water. And if we want, we can go ahead and change the water color, maybe something a little more appropriate, a little more closer towards those darker values or the lighter values or, or however you want this to appear. And then if you want, this is not going to be by any means perfect, but we could go ahead and put this onto the surface over here. That's, there we go. And so you can see uh, what this does now. Obviously, we can go ahead back into the material and start doing some nice fancy stuff with, with tiling and, and so on and so forth. But as you can see, if I bring up the material here and just change these values, then you're going to see that that water is going to uh, raise and lower as we need so that's it for this tutorial i'd like to thank you for watching if you like this video please leave uh, a comment in the section below don't forget to subscribe and until next time thank you very much and bye bye for now